Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. In this video I will be covering the new Christmas event. As always, in the first part of this video I will give you guys a quick overview of the event with the featured servants, the new event CE and the new common codes. Next we will focus on the event shop and of course the lottery that is the main feature of this event. And finally, in the second part of this video, I will give you guys some general farming strategy followed by the actual uh, three-turn uh, farming uh, composition for the best nodes for this event. As always, I will put uh, timestamps in the description if you want to skip around, uh, even if I do recommend that you watch it all, since uh, there are important information all over the place. Before we start with the event, I wanted to thank you all of you guys that have been sticking with me in the past few months, all your support is very much appreciated. And for those of you that are new to the channel, if you like this kind of videos, please consider dropping a like and subscribing to the channel, it really helps me keep going with this kind of content. Let's start with the unlock requirements. In order to participate in this event, you'll need to clear Lost World number 1. If you are a new player and you want to catch up faster, remember that uh, you can skip uh, before pseudo singularities. Next, a quick overview for the event. We will cover the details later on in the video. This uh, Samba Christmas is a farming event with uh, a side feature of uh, 2 vs 2 challenge battles called uh, EX matches and uh, an unlimited lottery. As always, there will be three base event currencies, silver, bronze and gold, whose drops can be boosted by event bonuses. And since we have an event lottery, there will be of course an event lottery currency, whose drop can be boosted by the new event shop C. The event bonus servants will gain an event quest damage boost, and bonus bond point experience, so definitely try to use them, we will cover them later on. Completing all the main quests and obtaining the 5th lottery grand prize will give Master a permanent copy of uh, Santa Quest and uh, additional copies and ascension material can be obtained in the event shop and from the lottery. Moving on to the servant featured in the summoning campaign, for the 5 star we have uh, Rider Quest and the new Brodamante Lancer. For 4 star we have uh, Chu Marta, Rider and Ruler. And of course uh, we have the 3 new event C's that uh, will uh, boost the drop of uh, the 3 base event currencies. Remember that uh, Marta Ruler is limited and in the same way uh, Rider Quest is story locked, so this is uh, a good opportunity if you want to get uh, either of uh, these two servants. Just a quick tip on Bradamante. I know men of culture will uh, go broke regardless of my advice, but anyway, if you already have uh, Parvati or Valkyries, remember that uh, those two will perform better with the double scaly setup uh, while costing less party cost. So if you plan to roll for uh, Bradamante only for farming and you already have one of those two, I would advise you to maybe skip this one. That said, if you lack an AoE Lancer, she is uh, definitely a very good option to start with. And of course, the one saving grace uh, while farming with her is that you'll never tire of watching her and be. The new welfare servant is uh, Samba Quest and she is uh, an AoE ruler, so the only servant that we can compare her with uh, is Amakusa. Just for the fact that uh, she is a ruler, she must be your main objective for this event, you don't want to skip her. Especially because uh, this is the only old event uh, that uh, still hasn't gotten a rerun in JP. So this may be your only chance uh, of getting uh, Samba Quest. Aside all that, uh, she's still a pretty solid unit. 
she can work as uh, a crit support and she has a targetable uh, star absorb skill that uh, only compare to the one that uh, Brynhild have. In order to get your first permanent copy of Samba Quest, you'll need to complete the main quest epilogue and obtain the Passion Exchange ticket from the Lottery Grand Prize box number 5. Remember that, as usual, the main quest is time-gated, so you'll need to wait for the epilogue to unlock on day 8. As a nice uh, side bonus, uh, Sanda Quest gains uh, double XP for the duration of this event, uh, so use this opportunity to level up uh, fast. In order to reach MP5, uh, you'll be able to buy from the event shop additional copies of Santa Quest uh, once you have uh, unlocked your first permanent copy. You'll need a total of uh, 16 uh, Lucha Belts that you can obtain from the event lottery. Lastly, in order to reach uh, Max Ascension, you'll need uh, the four Kukulkan Masks that you can obtain from the first uh, four Lottery Grand Prizes. Next, uh, let's take a look at the Event Bonus Servants. All of them will gain a Bond Point Acquisition Bonus of 50% for the Event Quests. In addition to that, they will also gain an event damage bonus ranging from 50% to 150%. You can check the chart on the screen right now for the details. Of course, the main focus are the AoE servants that will be used during the farming part. As you can see, we have a lot of free-to-player options too, like Rush, Jalter Lily, Solter and uh, Summer Shiso. Regarding Gacha Servant, uh, Achilles and Astolfo will be important too for the next farming part. And of course, uh, Bradamante being the star of the event, uh, she gets 100% uh, damage bonus, uh, so that means that uh, she will deal uh, class advantage damage to everyone except uh, Sabers. She still has uh, some problems with uh, refund, uh, even with double scaly waiver, so don't expect her to farm the Berserker node. We will see later on in this video for this matter. Let's move on with the event currencies. For the three base uh, event currencies that will be used uh, in the event shop, uh, we have uh, the bronze hola wristband, the silver macho dumbbell, and uh, the gold adios mic. As always, in order to boost uh, the drop uh, for these three base currencies, uh, you'll need uh, the three new gadgets that we will see soon. To roll uh, on the event lottery, you'll need the uh, amigo towel, and you can boost uh, their drop rates. Uh, using the new event limited C Holy Maidens teaching that you can buy from the event shop. Rolling the event lottery will uh, get you Lucha Belts that, uh, as we said before, will uh, be used to increase uh, Santa Quest MP level. In addition to that, uh, you can use them in order to challenge a special free quest that is uh, the best uh, gold node, but we will see later on in this video that uh, you usually want to clear this quest only once for the clear rewards and uh, farm the usual gold node. Finally, Lucha Belts can be also used to challenge the EX matches that are unique for this event. For these EX matches, you'll only use one servant and one support servant in a two servant team. These quests are basically free and guaranteed wins, since all of them will grant unlimited guts buff that is unremovable to all of your servants, meaning that you can complete them with any team you choose. These uh, EX matches are time-gated uh, like the main quest uh, and uh, in order to claim the clear rewards uh, 
you'll need a total of uh, 36 uh, Lucha Belts. Taking a closer look to the event limit series, we have the three new event gacha series that will uh, boost the drop rates for the three base event currencies, as we just said before. In the same way, the new event shop C will boost the drop rates for the lotto currency. As usual, a base C will give you a plus one drop bonus, while a max limit broken C will give you a plus two drop bonus. Speaking about uh, Holy Maiden Stitching, we can see from the chart on the screen that uh, you'll get only four copies from the event shop. However, you can also get it uh, as a quest drop in every single free quest for this event. And since I know all of you will be farming a lot for this event, as you should since this is a, a lottery event, you should be able to at least get 5 copies of this very useful C. It's very similar to the previous Kintoki Golden Carp C, in which it gives upon entry 20 crit star if maximum broken, so it will be a very useful C during challenge quest, for example. And if we talk about this event, you'll see in the next part of this video, when we will cover the 6 slot 3 turn setup, they will practically all use this star bomb C in order to crit the first room of each node. Let's move on with the new event common codes. In particular, the new 5 star one is very good. Holy Knight's Aurora in fact uh, grants uh, 4 crit star when attacking, and this is a very good effect for a crit uh, servant. For example, you can uh, use it on uh, Art's face card that usually don't generate crit star, but uh, it's also a very good effect on a Buster face card. Think it uh, like this. Since uh, every single hit uh, of uh, a generic face card has the potential to create uh, max uh, 3 crit star, this one uh, essentially grants you one and a half hit of guarantee crit star gen. The new 4 star one is a sort of beginning and end, and uh, it grants uh, 1000 damage plus. Essentially, it's a buffed uh, divinity, but only on a single face card. Not very useful in my opinion. And finally we have the new 3 star one, the Dark uh, Disciples command. And this one removes uh, one defense up buff from the enemy. This uh, instead can be very good if you are against a servant that have uh, defense buff. So definitely try to use it. To recap uh, all about uh, we have said about uh, the event items and uh, event currencies, you can check on the screen right now uh, the exact amount of uh, currencies that you will need uh, to clear the event shop. For the three base currencies, you'll need uh, 3,800 uh, Adios Mike, 3,200 uh, Mucho Dumbbell, and 2,700 uh, Hola Wristband. For Lucha Belts, you'll need a total of 71 in order to clear the shop and also clear all the EX matches for their rewards. Of course, as we said before, you can obtain Lucha Belts from the event lottery, and in order to clear at least all the grand prizes of this event lottery, you'll need a total of 6000 Amigo Tower. Among these grand prizes, uh, we have uh, the four Kukulkan masks uh, that uh, function as uh, the four ascension material for Samba Quest, uh, and uh, one passion exchange ticket uh, that uh, you will use uh, to unlock your first permanent copy of uh, Samba Quest. And uh, regarding Santa Quest, uh, remember that in this event you can unlock uh, two new spirit on dress for her. One you can buy from the event shop, and one is a clear rewards for 
the X quest uh, number 8. To sum it all up, you can check on the screen right now the two charts regarding the first clear rewards when you complete all of the event quests and all the event shop items that you can buy. Of course, the focus for this event is the lottery, but don't neglect the event shop because as you can see there are a lot of very useful stuff. And uh, remember that uh, essential material for the newer Lost Belt are especially valuable. Since you'll probably be farming a lot anyways, uh, I would advise you to first clear the event shop, uh, except the monuments maybe, and then uh, focus on the lottery. Speaking about uh, the event lottery, this is of course uh, unlimited for this event, uh, and that's the reason why this event is uh, among uh, the best uh, for this year as far as uh, farming is concerned. You'll need a total of uh, 600 Amigo Towels in order to clear each box. Only the first 10 boxes have uh, grand prizes, so you can technically reset uh, the box once you get uh, those grand prizes. But uh, I must stress it, uh, I highly advise you to clear all of the boxes. In fact, if you reset uh, beforehand, uh, you will lose uh, valuable materials uh, and especially you will lose uh, the silver and gold apples uh, that are only available in the first uh, 10 boxes. Only if you are pressed for time uh, maybe for school or for work or etc then uh, you can reset if you don't think you can clear at least the first uh, five boxes the first five are the minimum requirements in order to fully unlock uh, the potential for the new welfare santa quest if instead you have time on your hands then go nuts try to clear as many boxes as possible since, uh, I repeat, uh, this is one of the best farming spots uh, for this game. Unlimited Lottery are, are always uh, the best farming spot for this game. They will give you all that you can possibly need. You can check the chart on the screen right now if you have doubts. As you can see, you will get uh, unlimited essential material, and uh, for veteran players, uh, I know that bones are uh, a wet dream. They are for me at least. And of course, you'll get uh, unlimited skill gem for each class, embers, mana prism, friend points, and cupies. Next, for the will I need to use Apple to clear this event section. As you can see from the details on the screen right now, if you are pressed for time and uh, you only want to get your copy of uh, Santa Quest then your natural AP regen will be enough. In all other cases, you'll need uh, apples in order to clear the event shop uh, and uh, event lottery. And my opinion, just don't bother reading the details on the screen right now, just farm until you can't go on anymore. These are the best apples uh, that you will spend uh, in this entire year, aside from Guildfest. But uh, this time we have bones, so I would say that uh, this is even better than Guildfest. Now we can finally move on to the second part of this video, covering the actual farming part. Let's start with the general strategy. The three quests for this event are pretty straightforward, since uh, the latest uh, quest available always has uh, the best drop rates for a given currency, and uh, all quests uh, are mono currency nodes uh, that also drop uh, some lot of currency. The only exceptions to this second rule are the 7 training node and uh, the Muscle Paradise node. The 7 training node is uh, the node that you will farm the most for this event uh, since uh, it's uh, the best uh, lot of currency node that uh, only drops uh, lot of currency. The Muscle Paradise node has the best drop rates for gold currency, but since each Lucha Belts can be exchanged for half million QP in the event shop, 
I wouldn't advise you to use this node in order to farm gold currency. Only clear it once for the summon ticket rewards and if you need to farm for gold currency use the 6th training. We have already talked enough about the unlimited lottery in the previous part of this video, just farm this event as much as you can since the lottery is the best place for farming in this game. As we said before, the free quests are time gated by main quest progress and the last nodes have better drop rates. For this reason you should avoid spending apples in the first part of this event, save them for the latest part, that is if you are not pressed for time in the last part of the event. As we said before and as always with this kind of event, you can boost the drop rates for the three base currencies using the three new gacha seas and of course you can boost the drop rates for lotto currency using the new event shop C. As you will see soon enough we will use a lot of the event bond servant to take advantage of their damage bonus for this event. The most efficient way to farm this event AP wise is to start by farming the three base event currencies. Your first aim is to get uh, all the four copies of the new event shop C that boost the drop rates for lotto currency, and then you can uh, clear out uh, all of the event shop items that you desire. Before clearing the shop, remember to prioritize uh, gadget seas for both your own servants and uh, support servants. If you don't have gadget seas or you have a full slot available, that is the case most of the time, just fill them with the new event shop C for the lotto drop bonus. After you have cleared the event shop, you can focus uh, exclusively on the seventh node to farm uh, only the lotto currency. As I said previously in this video, if you only care about uh, getting your own copy of uh, Santa Quest, uh, you can run the seventh training only for the lotto currency. In fact, you can get uh, all that you need uh, by fully clearing the first uh, five boxes of the lottery. Before we move on to the actual three turns farming composition, you can check the chart on the screen for the drop rates of the essential material and all the available free quests for this event. Just to be clear, none of the essential material in this list have better drop rates comparing to free quests that are usually available outside of the event. But as it's always the case for this kind of event, since you will be farming a lot, you will take advantage of all of the essential material that will drop in these quests. As you can see on the screen, all of the event free quests have single class enemies. Every node has three room with three enemies in each one. Thanks to this format, uh, those of you that have uh, Skadi and Waver can sleep very well uh, during these weeks of uh, Christmas, uh, since you will be using her a lot uh, for farming for this event. Don't worry, I will also cover some alternative setups uh, and uh, of course the free-to-player setups. The nodes that uh, we will examine uh, in details are the 4th, the 5th, the 6th, and the seventh uh, training, since they are the best farming location for each one of the event currencies. Just uh, one last tip uh, before we start with the farming compositions. As it's always the case for this kind of damage bonus, uh, even this time uh, the damage bonus for the event servants uh, is uh, in the same category of uh, NP damage bonus and crit damage bonus. For this reason it stacks multiplicatively with attack buffs and card effectiveness buffs. So for example if you want to use Santa Attila while farming, you will see later on that we will use her. 
you will be giving uh, her MP damage buffs uh, to servants uh, without uh, the event damage bonus. For those servants, in fact, uh, you will be giving them uh, attack buff or card effectiveness buff. So let's say you will use uh, a lot more Shakespeare instead of Santa Attila. In the next section, I will analyze uh, the best 6-slot, uh, 5-slot uh, and free to player setups uh, for uh, the 4 best uh, nodes uh, for this event. By the way, if you don't know, by slots I mean uh, the number of uh, event seeds that you can bring while farming with that uh, setup. For my personal setups, uh, that include uh, all of uh, the free to player setups, uh, I will assume the following rules. NP1 Gacha Servants and NP5 Welfare Servants. Level 10 for damaging and NP charging skills. Level 20 for all DCs with an attack stat, both base and maximum broken. And of course, minimum damage. That is to say, the worst possible RNG in order to guarantee the kill with NP only. For all the remaining setups, uh, I will use uh, the spreadsheet uh, that you can find uh, linked below in the description. If you want to find more original and fun setups, uh, you can check it out. Sever of Avalon has made an amazing work at compiling all the previous uh, setups used in the JP version. Let's start with the best bronze node, that is the fourth training, the rider node. Regarding uh, servants with uh, special attack damage uh, for the demon board in room 2, we only have uh, two AoE options, Danzo and Raiko. However, we don't have uh, any AoE option against uh, uh, Summer Easter in room 3, we only have a single target one, like uh, Carmilla or Jack the Ripper. In the following part of uh, this video I won't suggest you guys any more single target option since as you can see the AoE servants are the best possible choice for these nodes. I just wanted to make an exception for this node since uh, we have Carmilla that has both uh, special damage against female and uh, the event damage bonus so she will uh, absolutely destroy some Easter. Moving on with the servants with uh, event damage bonus that have uh, class advantage against riders. Uh, among the AoE ones, uh, we only have uh, Summer Shiso for this node. As you will see shortly, the best DPS for this node is uh, definitely Ushiwa Kamaru Assassin. In fact, she can be used in both uh, six slot uh, setups. Uh, and uh, can loop with double scuddy waiver in uh, five slot setups so she's definitely really the most uh, flexible option and plus of course she has uh, the biggest uh, battery of 40 percent mp bar among the aoe assassins to put the icing on the cake uh, she has a man attribute uh, so in room 3 against uh, ishtar she has uh, attribute uh, advantage. Here we are with the best possible 6 slot setup for the rider node. The main idea as for all the other 6 slot setups uh, is to use the star bomb from the event CE in order to crit down with face card uh, the first room of the node. For these particular setups uh, we will use uh, double waiver so we will need uh, two AoE servants uh, with at least 30% uh, MP battery. There are two main reasons to choose uh, Semiramis and Okita Holder. The first is of course uh, the damage. Semiramis has uh, the best damage in room 2, while Okita has the best damage in room 3. The second reason is because uh, they are the only option available with uh, class advantage that have uh, an AoE Buster Noble Phantasm. That is to say, the following face card in room 2 and room 3 after the NPs uh, will benefit uh, from the Buster first card bonus. There are of course other options available, uh, as you can check on the screen right now. You can also use uh, a stall for Achilles thanks to the damage bonus uh, from the event, uh, and of course uh, 
Gilgamesh is uh, always uh, an available option in room 3 against servants for Ishtar Rider. Even if she is an alter ego, as you can see, Okitovolt has the best damage against uh, Ishtar in room 3. That is because only Air and uh, Ushua Kamaru Assassin have uh, attribute advantage against Ishtar in room 3. Just one last tip. Uh, Remember that uh, Semiramis uh, needs uh, 8 crystal in order to activate her Buster Down. So if you want to use her in room 2 for the best possible damage, uh, you have to be sure to have uh, crystal available. Technically, you can delay the swap in of the second waiver in order to use the star bomb from the event C, but uh, that way you might not be able to crit down the first uh, room, depending on your face cards. A good alternative is to use uh, an AoE quick uh, servants in room 2 in order to generate the star necessary for Semiramis in room 3. Let's move on with the best 5-slot uh, setup for this node, and of course it's uh, Ushio Kamaru Assassin looping with double scuddy and waver. This setup is uh, the most easy one and the most reliable. At uh, MP1 you will need the face card in order to clear the demo board in room 2 and Ishtar in room 3, but the advantage of this setup is that you can use uh, the double scuddy defense down whenever you want in room 2 if you need, but you would usually save it for room 3. We also have another option tied for best 5 slot setups, that is uh, Lancelot with this time a 50% C, Holy Knight Supper in this case. It's thanks to Rider enemies granting a lot of refund that we can use a 50% C on Lancelot, that way increasing the damage as much as possible. For comparison, I also put on the screen uh, the usual uh, double scuddy waver setups with Lancelot uh, using uh, the standard kaleidoscope. As you can see, the first setup with uh, Max Limit Broken and Holy Knight Supper is uh, the best one for damage and it's also cheaper. It's also cheaper than the previous setups with uh, Wishio Kamaru Assassin, since that one requires a kaleidoscope. With these Lancelot setups we will deal uh, a bit more damage room 2 against the Demon Boar, thanks to the Scuddy Defense Down skill that we are forced to use in room 2. And of course uh, Ushio Akamaru has attribute uh, disadvantage in room 2, so Lancelot wins this time for both reasons. However, in room 3, this time Ushua Kamaru Assassin wins, and by a large margin, since uh, she has uh, class advantage, while uh, Lancelot has class disadvantage. And of course, uh, with the previous setups, we can save uh, the second Scuddy defense down, both second Scuddy defense down for room 3, for more damage. Some honorable mention uh, about the 5 slot setups before we move on uh, to the free to player setup. Going from the cheapest one to the most uh, expensive ones, we have uh, Dante's with uh, Double Scuddy and Kaleidoscope. We also have uh, Bradamante available with uh, Double Scuddy Waver plus Kaleidoscope since uh, Rider Enemies grants a large amount of refund in this node, and uh, so she can loop, thanks to the event damage bonus that she gets. This two option doesn't have a class advantage against Rider, but can work uh, if you have uh, higher MP levels. You can check the numbers in the spreadsheet uh, linked down below in the description. I was surprised about this one setups uh, not being in the spreadsheet below, uh, as much as uh, with Ushio Kamaru Assassin. Uh, it's Summer Shiso. Summer Shiso has 50% uh, bonus damage in this event, and uh, she can loop with uh, a Maslamian Broken Kaleidoscope, uh, Double Scuddy, and Weaver. And, uh, 
if you have a master in broker in kaleidoscope she is the best possible option for this node she will absolutely destroy each wave and you don't even need her uh, quick buff you can also only use scadi and waver skills she will refund 30% mp charge in both uh, room 1 and room 2 so you can uh, just use waver to top off uh, the mp bar talking about uh, maximum broken kaleidoscope uh, we also have uh, the setup with uh, frankenstein this one uses uh, double scadi and nightingale for the debuff clear and uh, she has very good damage for this node next we have the completely free to player setups uh, this time it's a uh, three slot setup use uh, santa at the mp charge on a rush uh, on turn one and then mp with the rush he will always clear room 1 with uh, any 50% charge C that you have. On turn 2, use uh, Santatla and be damage buff on Spartacus and uh, swap her out for uh, Waver. Then use Waver charge skills uh, to fill uh, both Spartacus and uh, Summer Shiso. Even with uh, a level 100 uh, Aerial Drive C, Spartacus will leave uh, max 16k HP to the Demon Boar in room 2 without uh, the Master Attack uh, buff. But you can use the Star Bomb from Weather to clear the remaining HP with face guards. In room 3, with the Master Attack buff, Summer Shiso will leave uh, max 40k HP to Summer Ishtar. Let's move on with the best uh, silver node, the 5th training Berserker node. Since the enemies are Berserkers, this time we have a lot of options and uh, a lot of uh, the setups from uh, other days uh, will work uh, for this node too. Just a quick note about uh, looping setups, uh, especially quick looping setups. Uh, for Berserkers, uh, uh, you have the lowest amount of refund so some setups are not available for this node for example Brodamante for servants with uh, special attack damage uh, in this node uh, we have uh, Proto Arthur in room 2 against uh, Spriggan and uh, in room 3 against uh, Beowulf uh, we have uh, a lot of options in order of uh, MP charge, we have uh, Tesla, Gilgamesh, Sharazad, and uh, Raiko. In a similar way, for the event damage bonus servants, uh, we have uh, all the event damage bonus servants, uh, but uh, the best ones are the ones with uh, MP charge. In order, they are Astolfo, Anastasia, Arash, Achilles, Okusai, Rider of Resistance. Jolter Lily and Rodamante. For this node, in my opinion, the best DPS is Astolfo. In fact, he has both 50% MP charge and event damage bonus, so he is very versatile and can be used in both 6 slot setup and 5 slot setups. In particular, he is very good for 6 slot setups thanks to his passive star gen with skill and MP, and of course his uh, crit damage buff from his third skill. Speaking about uh, 6 slot setups, uh, this Berserker node uh, of course has uh, the best one. In fact, uh, we have uh, a lot of options to choose from uh, among the event bone servants, and uh, since the enemies are Berserkers, we have uh, way less RNG in room 1, uh, given that we can use uh, even uh, waiver face cards if we need to cut down room 1. The best possible 6 slot setup is uh, the one with uh, Jolter Lily and Arash. It's uh, the best one in my opinion since uh, it only needs uh, your own waiver and uh, you will always clear with MP only both room 2 and room 3. Next we have the setups with uh, Arash and Astolfo and this time you will need uh, Astolfo plus uh, Waver or Skadi. 
Of course, you can also use double waiver with this setup, but in this case, for a stall for room 3, SCADI is better for damage. Finally, we have the setup with uh, Astolfo and Achilles, and for this one you'll need, of course, uh, Astolfo, Achilles, uh, plus uh, Weaver or Scali. Same deal as before, you can also use a double Weaver for this setup, but uh, Scali is better for damage. Moving on to the 5 slot setups, this time we will uh, analyze both uh, the quick setups and the art setups. The best uh, quick 5 slot setups, that it's probably also the best possible 5 slot setup for this node, is the one with Astolfo and Nitocris. This is uh, cheaper comparing to the other quick looping setups, since you only need your own SCADI. You don't need uh, Kaleidoscope and you don't need Weaver. And more importantly, this one is uh, a guaranteed return setups. If you don't have uh, NP2 Nitrocris, just use uh, Scadi Defense Down in room 1 and you'll always kill with NP only. That way you will lose some damage uh, for Astolfo in room 3, but as you can see, he already deals more than enough. For quick looping setups all 3 rooms, uh, the best option this time is uh, Achilles. You'll need, of course, uh, Kaleidoscope, Waver, and Double Scadi, but with this setup uh, you will always kill with MP only all 3 room. Moving on to the best arts 5 slot setup, we have uh, the one with uh, Anastasia. This is the cheapest 5 uh, slot option for this node, even comparing to the quick setups, and as you can see, it's uh, practically a guarantee 3 turn setups if you have uh, MP2 Anastasia. If you have uh, Nero Bride or Tamamo, you can also use them instead of Santa Attila. However, since they lack uh, the 20% MP charge of Santa Attila, you might encounter some troubles uh, for the refund in room 2. For Tamamo, you can still use a maximum broken Holy Night Supper but you'll need to use either Master Attack buff or Anastasia Arts buff in room 2. If instead you use a Muslim Broken Dive to Blue Sea, you can save your Attack buff and Arts buff for room 3. For Nero Bride it's more difficult, you will need both the Muslim Broken Dive to Blue Sea and one of the two skills in room 2 to refound enough. You'll need to use uh, either the Arts buff or the Attack Master buff in room 2. If we switch uh, Anastasia for another waiver, we have these uh, alternative uh, art setups, and uh, you should remember it from Guildfest. It's some more budget setups uh, since you'll probably have your own waiver instead of your own Anastasia. However, for this setup you will need to use uh, Sigurd's buff in room 2 in order to refund enough, and that way the damage in room 3 will fall short. Changing the main DPS from Anastasia to Summer Jean, we have uh, an even cheaper setup. For this one we can use a uh, base uh, Holy Knight Supper CE without the need of a maximum broken one. We also don't need Santa Attila for this setup comparing to the previous uh, Anastasia one, but uh, as you can see the damage for this one is lower. However, with the right support we can drastically increase the damage. For example, since Jean will refund 21% uh, in room 2 with only Paracelsus and Waver buffs, we can use the Order Change Mystic Code with a 20% charger. Among them, Langling is uh, of course the best option, followed by for example uh, Santa Attila, like with the previous uh, Anastasia setup. Truthfully, the second best option is not Santa Attila but uh, Ryoma for this node, since if you use a Muslim broken copy of uh, Holy Knight Supper C, you can use him as a 10% charger. 
you just need to save a waiver defense buff for room 3, together with Ryoma. Of course, you can also use uh, Order Change with uh, Tamo and Nero Bride, and in this case, you will always uh, refund uh, more than 69% needed in room 2. With all these uh, Order Change setups, uh, you will always kill with MP only room 2 with Jean, and you will deal uh, reliable damage in room 3 in order to kill uh, within the 3 turns. Before we move on to the free to player setups, uh, some honorable mentions. As I said before, since uh, Berserker's refund uh, is very low, all the quick looping setups uh, requirements are higher for this node. Both uh, Dante's and Lancelot can work with uh, a standard kaleidoscope, uh, but uh, they will need uh, double scuddy plus waiver. We can also use the usual 3 turns looping with Astolfo, but you will need uh, a Muslim Broken Kaleidoscope, uh, Double Scuddy and Waver. And uh, the same uh, is true for Bradamante. Lastly, I wanted to mention BB Summer among the 6 slot setups. She has very good damage against Berserkers, for example in a double waver setup, uh, she can kill with MP only room 3 if uh, she is uh, at uh, MP2. But uh, what makes her special, aside from the 50% battery, is her passive star gen and the ability to lock your face cards. For example, if you happen to have, let's say, two of her face cards in room 1, you can use uh, your lock card skills and you can take advantage of those two face cards to clear the remaining HP in room 2 and room 3. Remember that she also has a very strong uh, crit skill, it's the same as Jolter. And for those of you that are interested in art setups, uh, Okusai this time can't work in a 5 slot setup, since against Berserkers uh, even with maximum broken kaleidoscope and double waver, she doesn't uh, refund enough. This time, for you guys, I have uh, two free to player setups. The first one is a 5 slot setup, so it has a very good drop bonus. However, the damage in room 2 for this one with uh, Avicebron is not very good, so you'll need, uh, of course, face card in order to clear room 2. For room 3 you have two options, the first one is a rush that uh, will deal more damage but will die afterwards. Your second option is Jolter Lily, she will deal less uh, damage but uh, she will survive and uh, her MP buff uh, the wall team attack for one turn, so you can use it uh, to clear the remaining HP in room 3. Trading the plus one drop bonus for the consistency, you have the best free to player setups, uh, that is this one with four slot. To give you the numbers, uh, Paracelsius will always kill with MP only in room one. For a rush, if you use a level 100 aerial drive C, he will also always kill with MP only in room two. And for Solter, if you use the master attack buff and give her Shakespeare buff in room 3 and use a level 100 uh, Golden Sumo C, she will always kill with MP only. You can also use uh, Jolter Lily if you don't have Solter, and with the same condition, she will leave uh, max uh, 20k HP for face card in room 3. Next, uh, we can move on to the best gold node, that is the 6th training caster node. Regarding servants with uh, special damage, uh, AoE MP and class advantage, we only have uh, Raiko in room 2 for the demon. I have also put uh, Okusai in this category, since uh, even without class advantage, she has 50% uh, uh, special damage against uh, man attribute enemies, that is, uh, all the enemies of this node uh, except for the demon in room 2. If you add to the mix uh, her event damage bonus, uh, she can be used uh, as well. 
this time uh, she can also loop uh, all three rooms, uh, but uh, the requirements for that uh, are pretty high. In this event, uh, there are eight uh, riders with AoE MP that have uh, bonus damage. Uh, essentially, everyone except uh, the standard rider quest. Among them, uh, Martyr Rider is the only one that has uh, 100% attack damage bonus. Finally, remember that uh, Astolfo, Achilles and Rider of Resistance have uh, MP battery and if you like uh, quick looping setups, uh, Astolfo, Achilles and Red Hair can all loop uh, all the three rooms, but with uh, different requirements. Once again, the best DPS of choice for this node uh, is in my opinion Astolfo. The reason is the same uh, of the previous node, he can be used in both 6-slot uh, setup and 5-slot uh, setups. For 6-slot setups he has MP charge, passive uh, star gen with uh, his skill and MP, and uh, he has a very nice uh, crit damage buff to crit down room 1. And for the 5-slot setups his requirements as uh, team composition are lower compared to the other uh, quick looping option. If you have uh, Rider Mordred uh, with uh, high MP level, this is uh, absolutely the best 6-slot uh, setup for this node. It's also the only 6-slot setup for this entire event uh, that uh, doesn't have uh, any kind of RNG for room 1. As you can see, the only problem with this setup uh, is the damage in room 2 and room 3. In order to maximize set damage, you'll need to use Langling as 20% charger. And if you have MP2 or higher Mordred, you can also use Mirror Bride instead of Paracelsius. In fact, with only MP1 Mordred, with Nero Bride, you will refund only 98% bar in <laughs> room 2. So if uh, that's your case, uh, you need to use uh, Black Grail C if you want to use uh, Nero Bride instead of Paracelsus. And with uh, said uh, Black Grail C, this become a very good uh, and reliable 5-slot uh, setup. As an alternative 6-slot uh, setup, we can do like with the previous nodes uh, and uh, use face card to crit down uh, the first room uh, using the star bomb from the event C. Usually for this setup uh, we use double waiver with two servants with uh, at least 30% uh, MP charge, but this time uh, since we have both uh, Achilles and Stolfo as uh, event bonus uh, servants, uh, we will use uh, Waver plus Scadi to benefit the most uh, from Scadi quick buff. You can also use this uh, Scadi plus Waver setup uh, with uh, other combination of 30% uh, charger and 50% charger, like uh, Drake and Rider of Resistance. The damage calculation for Astolfo and Achilles that you can check on the screen right now don't include the SCADI defense down in both room 2 and room 3. Since they already deal uh, enough damage uh, with uh, MP in both rooms, you can use, uh, for example, SCADI defense down in room 1, given that uh, it's the only place with RNG for this setup. As for the previous node, for the 5-slot setups, we will first analyze the quick setups and then the art setups. The best possible 5-slot quick setup is the red market one on the screen right now, and as you can see, you'll need Scadi, Weaver, Astolfo, and one between Nitocris or Avisbron. If you don't have Weaver, you can still use uh, an alternative setup uh, if you have a Kaleidoscope. For this one, you will need a 20% MP charger like uh, Helena, Merlin or Ortimandias, but the damage will be lower. 
In any case, the real problem is in room 1 for damage, so you'll want to use uh, both uh, Scud Defense Down and the Master Attack Buff in room 1. For Avisbron, with uh, his first skill at level 6 or higher, he will uh, reliable kill with MP only if he is MP5. In fact, uh, he can leave the max uh, 5k HP to the stronger mob in room 1 for an easy face cut. Same deal with uh, Nitrochris. Thanks to her attribute advantage in room 1, she will always kill the lower mobs uh, with MP only, even at uh, MP1, and leave max uh, 5k HP to the stronger mob. In the spreadsheet on the screen right now, they maxed uh, Nitocris' uh, first skill because they wanted to use her with uh, her insta kill effect since the mobs in room 1 are lower rarity. But as I just said, her damage is enough even at MP1 without relying on her insta kill effect. Moving on to a less cheaper setups. The one with uh, Achilles is the best uh, quick looping setups. Thanks to the event damage bonus, uh, Achilles will absolutely destroy each wave, no question asked. So if you have the resources, uh, this is uh, the best possible quick setup. Among the riders, uh, Mary can also loop with uh, double scuddy plus waver and a standard uh, little Halloween Devil C. Of course, the damage will be lower compared to Achilles, but to give you the numbers, uh, at uh, MP2 she will practically always kill with MP only, all three room. Finally, you can check on the screen that uh, both uh, Achilles and uh, Mary can loop uh, even without your own waiver if you have a max limit block and kaleidoscope. As you can see, the damage is so high anyway that uh, you can also use uh, these setups instead. For the best arts 5-slot uh, setup, uh, once again we have uh, Mordred Rider. This time we will be using uh, a Mastering Broken copy of Holy Night Supper with uh, support Nero Bride, Lan Ling and Caster Gilgamesh. This is the best possible 5-slot setup for Mordred Rider. If you don't have Neurobride, Paracelsius is a valid alternative, and in the same way, if you don't have uh, Caster Gilgamesh, you can use uh, both Neurobride or uh, Tamamo. In a similar way, Landling can be exchanged for uh, Helena. For the damage calculation that you can see on the screen, they are done with uh, Paracelsius, Langling, and Caster Gilgamesh. If instead you use uh, Neurobride, uh, you'll be able to kill Reliably with MP only, even with Mordred at uh, MP level 1. Finally, for Mordred Rider, we can also use the previous 6-slot uh, setup, uh, and uh, we just need to change the C for Mordred Rider using a uh, Black Grail C. Same deal as before, we just talked about uh, this one previously, so just remember that the best combination for this one is uh, with Neurobride, Langling and Waver. With this combination you will readily kill with MP only, even at MP1. Finally, for some expensive but uh, interesting uh, looping 5-slot uh, art setups, we have uh, also Hokusai and uh, Kiara. The requirements in this case are pretty high, with uh, maximum block and kaleidoscope, uh, MP2 on higher for Hokusai, and for Kiara, same deal with maximum block and kaleidoscope, uh, top tire supports, uh, and uh, even then the damage will be very low. Some honorable mention before we move on to the free to player setups. Since uh, caster enemies have the highest uh, refound, uh, then uh, all the previous setups that worked in the Rider node, the best uh, bronze node, can work in this uh, node too. So of course we have Dantes with double scuddy and kaleidoscope, Lancelot with double scuddy, Weaver and kaleidoscope. Again, thanks to the damage bonus from the event, we can use Brodamante 
with the double scaly weaver and a standard kaleidoscope and for a more expensive option if you have a maximum broken kaleidoscope plus the usual double scaly weaver you can do so three loop uh, farm with uh, red hair finally don't forget uh, frankenstein she can also loop uh, but with a maximum broken kaleidoscope double scaly and uh, nightingale let's move on with the free to player setups we have two this time both are three slot setups if you have a copy of rider of resistance i'm not sure since uh, he is story locked then this one is the best possible completely free to player setup use shakespeare to charge a rush in room one then np with a rush then in room two you can use uh, shakespeare buster buff and uh, swap in waiver use waiver to charge uh, both uh, rider of resistance and soldier then np with the rider of resistance finally in room 3 use the master attack buff and np with soldier a rush will of course always kill with np only in room 1 thanks to the event damage bonus in the same way in both room 2 and room 3 even with uh, only level 20 c's both uh, Rider of Resistance and Soldier will always kill with them only. Don't worry if you only have MP1 Rider of Resistance, I checked the numbers and for this case even with uh, MP1 and level 1 damaging skills he will leave uh, max uh, 6k HP in room 2 so you are fine to go even with uh, only one copy and without uh, leveling any skill except for his 30% uh, and charge. If you don't have uh, any copies of Rider of Resistance, you can use this alternative setup with Spartacus. In this case, same deal as before, you use uh, Santa Attila instead of Shakespeare for better damage in room 2 with Spartacus, but even then, uh, with uh, level 20 Aerial Drive C, with all the possible buff, uh, that is uh, Waver attack buff, the master attack buff and Santa Attila MP damage buff, Spartacus will leave uh, max 30k HP in room 2. The problem is that uh, you also have attribute uh, disadvantage in room 2. If you have a kaleidoscope or even a maximum broken copy of uh, imaginary element, then you can use that on a rush and use Medusa instead of Spartacus for better damage in room 2. We have finally arrived at the best lot node, the 7th training Archer's node. This is the node that you'll farm the most for this event, obviously. Regarding servants with special damage against the Chimera in room 2 and Moriarty in room 3, this time we don't have any AoE servants available. Regarding AoE servants with the event bonus damage and class advantage, we have Prodamante of course with 100% event damage bonus and with 50% event damage bonus we have Jolter, Lily, Romulus and Hector. And of course for this node it's no surprise that Prodamante is the best possible DPS. She can work both for 6 slot setup and 5 slot setup and thanks to her 100% damage bonus she is always the best choice available. The best possible 6 slot setup is the one with Double Weaver, Rodamante and Lertoria. This setup works because the 20% MP charge skill for Rodamante is targetable so we can use it on Lertoria and instead save uh, all of the two ever skills uh, for Bradamante in order to reach uh, 100% MP charge. As with the previous uh, stick slot setups, uh, you'll need to crit uh, with face card in room 1 thanks to the star bombs uh, from the event seas. If you don't have Bradamante, you can use these alternative setups. They all use uh, double waiver Weaver plus Merlin or Weaver plus Skadi. However, the damage of course will be lower and you'll always have some type of RNG even after room 1 because you'll need to find the right face card in order to fill 
100% MP charge for both your DPS. Your best option is with Karna and Lartoria, since Karna only needs to find 5% MP charge through face card in either room 1 or room 2. Karna also has the best damage after Prodamante even without uh, event damage bonus and thanks to her very strong uh, crit buff you can reliably clear room 1 with face cards. Then we have the setups with uh, Reskigal and this one I would advise you to use it only if you have Merlin, otherwise the damage will be very low at MP1. And since you'll be using Merlin, you'll need to find uh, this time 10% MP charge for Lartoria in uh, either Room 1 or Room 2. Finally, we have the setup with uh, Weaver, Merlin, Jolter Lily, and uh, either Eleskigal or Lartoria. Don't trust the chart on the screen right now, since uh, the best option in this case is Lartoria instead of uh, Eleskigal. In fact, Lartoria has uh, attribute advantage in room 2. Aside from the higher damage in room 2, Lartoria can also buff your team's attack uh, in room 1 for easy face guarding. Instead, Ereshkigal will need to use her MP in order to buff your team attack. This may seem a good uh, 6 slot setup, uh, damage wise at least, but uh, don't be fooled, this one requires 10% NP charge for both uh, Lartoria and Jolter Lily. And the worst part is that you'll need that 10% uh, NP charge in room 1, so when you'll be pressed for RNG in order to kill with crits. So this can be easily shift in a 4 turn uh, setups. If you are okay with uh, a possible 4 turn or 5 turn setups, uh, then this one has the best damage uh, after Bradamante. Moving on to the best uh, 5 slot setup, uh, as I said before, Bradamante is the queen for the lottery. Thanks to her high event damage bonus, uh, she will always kill with MP only, with uh, double scaly setups, uh, even at MP1. If you have your own waiver, you just need uh, a base kaleidoscope, uh, while uh, if you have no waiver, then you'll need uh, a masculine broken copy. In either cases, uh, the damage won't be a problem, as you can check uh, from the chart on the screen right now. As an alternative, if you don't have Brodamante, you can use Parvati or Valkyries. This time, to reach the maximum amount of damage, you can use a maximum broken copy of Holy Knight Supper C. For comparison, Valkyries will deal more damage in room 2, but Parvati wins in room 3 thanks to her 1 turns burst damage buff. To give you guys some numbers, uh, if you use a uh, level 100 uh, maximum broken Holy Knight Supper C, Parvati with uh, one of Skadi defense down in room 2 will practically always kill with MP only, even at MP1. She can leave uh, max just a handful of HP for easy and guaranteed face cards. In room 3, if you use her attack buff, the master attack buff and both scar defense down for comparison, she will leave the max 30k HP for face cards. The advice is to choose when to use Skadi's defense down, either in room 2 or room 3, depending on your face cards. For room 2, in any case, you only need one if you don't have any of Parvati or Valkyries face cards. If you don't have your own waiver, both Parvati and Valkyries can work with a standard kaleidoscope, even if the damage will be lower, of course. In particular, Parvati is the only one that can work with a Muslim Broken Imaginary Element C. For this setup, you are tied to Double Scary plus Mage Association Mystic Code. If you want to use any other mystic codes, uh, you'll need uh, a Muslim broken copy of Kaleidoscope. 
both for Parvati and Valkyries. Some honorable mention for 5 slot setups before we move on to the free to player setups. As usual, you can use Dantes with Kaleidoscope plus Double Scadi and Lancelot with Kaleidoscope, Double Scadi and Weaver. Thanks to the event damage bonus, you can also use Achilles with the same setup, even without class advantage, if you have, for example, higher B level. For some less cheap setups uh, requiring a max limit broken copy of Kaleidoscope, uh, we have Frankenstein that require double scuddy plus uh, Nightingale or PB. Again, we have Astolfo with uh, double scuddy plus Waver, and it's the same as uh, Achilles. It can work uh, thanks to the event damage bonus uh, if you have uh, higher MP levels. Finally, we have the best free to player setups for the Lotto Note, and this time is a 3 slot setup. On turn 1, use Santa Attila MP charge on Arash, then MP with Arash. On turn 2, use Santa Attila MP damage buff on Spartacus, and then swap her out for Waver. Use all of Waver skills on Jolter Lily in order to charge her to 100% MP bar then use the master attack buff and uh, all of Spartacus skill and uh, MP with uh, Spartacus. Finally in round 3 use all of uh, Jolter Lily skills and MP with her. Arash will always kill with MP only in room 1 thanks to the event damage bonus uh, with uh, whatever 50% MP bar C you want to use for him. Next, for Spartacus and Jolter Lily, if you want to use uh, level 100C, Spartacus can leave max uh, 5k HP in room 2, while uh, Jolter Lily can leave max uh, 30k HP in room 3. Thanks for watching until the end guys, I hope uh, you liked this video, and if you want to see more of this kind of content in the future, please uh, consider dropping a like, a comment or subscribing to the channel. It won't cost you anything, but uh, really it means a lot to me. Reading your comments, interacting with you guys and feeling your support uh, really helps me keep going. Anyway, that's all for this event guys, I will see you next time, bye bye.